Life is rough. You gotta take the time to focus on what brings you joy. As the Japanese say, ikigai. Or, what am I nerding out about right now? <laughs> Join us at the gaming table. Or reading nook. To find your happiness. I'm Lainey. I'm Marshall. And this is Elated Geek. Hello, everyone. This is Marshall. And this is Lainey. And today, we're going to talk about our top thrillers that either we have read in 2021 or that came out in 2021 or both. Because honestly, if it's on this list and it came out in 2021, we read it in 2021. Correct. Now, between the two of us, we are picking our top five books and there are some overlaps. Mm -hmm. So also, we are fully aware that it is only October and there might be some more thrillers that come out. And if you're wondering about what those might be later on, we will have a podcast wrapping up our best books of 2021. So you can stay tuned for that. I will say after looking back on these books, I've had kind of a lackluster year for thrillers. Last year, I had an amazing amount of thrillers that I loved. And this year has been kind of, I think, more sparse. I don't know if it's just me getting a little bit bored or if it's just a lack of really good thrillers and a, an abundance of other really good books. So I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, last year was my first year, like, really reading. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, oh, well, here's a book. I'll go read it. Right. Okay. So I had a lot of really strong contenders from last year. And yeah, as far as the thrillers go, I feel like, yeah, this, this year was a little bit on the eh side. Right. But I did find an author that I really do like. A few of them, actually, mm -hmm. that I was like, hmm, I like what you're going with here. Mm -hmm. This is good. Awesome. So yeah. All right. So let us start. Now we're going to start with our fifth one and work mm -hmm. our way up to our top thriller that we read, right? Marshall's going to start. This is Falling by T.J. Newman. Uh, Falling is the story of a commercial airlines pilot who receives a text message or video message of a terrorist having kidnapped his family and strapped a bomb to his wife. And the terrorist says, you're going to crash your plane into a building that I'm not going to tell you where it is or I'm killing your family. What is he going to do now? How is he going to handle this? And we talked about this a little bit more in the wrap up for last month because it was one of my top books of last month. Mm -hmm. But this was really good for how it treated its villains. How are people dealing with these issues? And I think the big twist I saw coming mm -hmm. a mile away to the point that I'm surprised nobody else in that plane was seeing it. But So were you saying this is more of like an experience all around that mm -hmm. made you like this book, not that it caught you by surprise? It did not catch me by surprise, uh -huh. ever. But it was a ride. And that's really what I feel that a thriller needs to have, is that it's not just a twist, it's a ride. Right. And that twist is kind of like that part of a roller coaster and you've been going up and down and then all of a sudden you reach this thing and you're like, wait, how does this, how does this coaster track keep going? Right. And then suddenly it does a change of direction. Like a journey. Yeah. I will say that I have not read this book at all. We did get this from Libro. I had not heard anything about this book before we had seen that it was one of our books that we were able to get as an affiliate from Libro. So I'm kind of glad we did because I, I mean, I look forward to listening to it. I just have a lot harder time doing audiobooks because mm -hmm. I don't have as much time to listen to them. But I probably will in the future make time for this one because it sounds really great. Cool. All right. What's your number five? My number five is one that I recently read and I think we did talk about it in our last wrap up as well. And that is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Now, Marshall did not read this yet. And I say yet, even though I describe it to him and he's kind of like, I don't know, but I'm going to say it was actually really good. I got it from Book of the Month. I have also listened to His and Hers by Alice Feeney. I feel like for me, Alice Feeney is definitely one of those that I need to read and not listen to because okay. I did like His and Hers, but I fully recognize that I would have liked it more if I had read it physically. 
So the story of Rock, Paper, Scissors is about a couple who wins a weekend away up in a snowy cabin that used to be a church. And it's kind of a renovated into a house. And then they get stranded up there. Spooky things start happening. And you start to realize that things are connected through them getting this. It's told from the point of view of the wife of the couple going up and in letters that are written by the wife from the past. So you kind of see the past of what happens and you see the present. But that's all I can talk about because there are some twists in there and there are some that you think you know that are kind of true, but turn out to be a different thing than you think. And I'm sorry for the ambiguity there, but that's but there kind of... there was another thing that you mentioned in our review of this that I find really interesting. And that was that the, the husband has a disorder that he cannot recognize people's faces. Right. And I thought that was really kind of cool. Right. So he says that he can recognize people based on smell. And on top of all of that, he is traumatized. He has a past trauma because he saw his mother get hit by a car and die. Mm -hmm. But he cannot identify who did it because he can't recognize faces. So it's it was actually a really interesting way to kind of twist into everything that was happening into this book. I mean, I liked it a lot. I thought it was a great book. I actually want to go back and read it again. Now that I know kind of what the twist is, I want to go back and read it. So I know initially you were like, eh, I'm not interested. It's going to be on my list. I think maybe it's already on my list. I I have the wrong thing open. I can't tell Mm -hmm. you. But yeah, that... It's got some interesting aspects to it, and at first I was kind of like, meh, I don't think that's for me, but I want to see how they deal with it. And I always love books that have found uh, media within them, so those Mm -hmm. letters are intriguing to me. Yes. All right, what's your next book? So my number four is He Started It by Samantha Downing. Now, this book actually came out last year. Yes, it did, but I didn't get to it until I think midway through this year. Mm Mm-hmm. And he started it is the story of a bunch of siblings who are going on a road trip to scatter their grandfather's ashes. But the road trip is required in the will because they have to recreate the road trip that divided the family way back when they were young and deal with the mystery that surrounds it. Mm -hmm. And they are being... Followed yes. by a, a truck that is harassing them and maybe playing a song that's connected to their past and hijacking their car. It is nuts. And all of these characters are dysfunctional. Yeah, totally. Totally dysfunctional. And it's just fine. Like so many times you have these dysfunctional characters and I can't handle it. I could handle it with these. And that seems to be something that Samantha Downing is good with. Mm-hmm. And we'll get to that with another one, I think. Right. And let you tell Marshall, um, it seems to me that he starts really liking Samantha Downing as an author. I really think, bonus, that you should get My Lovely Wife. Because that is also another book of hers that I thought was like, what? <laughs> it was so interesting. Kind of along the same crazy vein of he started it. So... Uh, I I definitely recommend that one as well. Okay. Okay. All right. So my next book is actually Marshall's next book after that, which is For Your Own Good, also by Samantha Downing. Now, this book was so good for me that I actually listened to it one and a half times. I listened to it one (laughs) time by myself. And then Marshall and I were driving around uh, doing some stuff. And I listened to like the second half of the book with him. Again, as he was listening to it the first time, uh, because I just thought it was so fun. And actually to know the twist of, and how it ends and watch someone else discover the twist is just so satisfying. Um, to yeah. Me. And that's something that's really good about the Samantha. You can listen to it again. Mm-hmm. And unlike a lot of mysteries and thrillers, knowing who did it doesn't change the ride. Mm-hmm. It Well, actually, it does change the ride, but it changes it for the better. Because now you're like, oh, yeah, Uh now I know what's going on. And this changes things subtly. So tell me what it's about, Marshall. Okay, so For Your Own Good is the story of a teacher who grew up in really bad circumstances 
and felt like he was being bullied by rich kids. So now he's a teacher at a rich kid's school. And guess what he's going to do? You betcha he's going to bully the rich kids. <laughs> Under the guise of teaching them how to be better. Yeah, he's like, I'm trying to make you a better person. But sometimes, well, all the time, he's a little stuck up in his own head. And mm -hmm. he thinks that things are going on when they aren't. And you know what? He's got a massive ego. Which means he can't be around people with massive egos. And guess what? You're at a school filled with people that came from rich families. So they've got massive egos. And he poisons somebody. Yeah, that's, you know, going in exactly what type of man he is and exactly the fact that he is poisoning people. You know this. But I think the biggest surprise about this book is the supporting characters yep. and how they're involved in the story. I think that is really what makes it for me and like how kooky everything is. You know, it, everybody's strange and weird, but, you know, it's, it's just so entertaining. So definitely mm -hmm. check that book out. Very good. Yeah. So what also is funny is that my next two books are also Marshall's next two books, although not in the same order. So we're going to talk about his number two, which is also my number two. I'm jumping over my number three. Okay. Okay. We'll come but back to we're, it. We'll, we'll talk about our number twos because they're the same. Mm -hmm. And that is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelitis. Now, we did also read The Maidens this year. Unfortunately, it did not make my list just because there were other good ones that I yeah, thought. Yeah, same with me. But The Silent Patient, for me, is one of those books because uh, I, I, again, listened to it in audiobook, gasped audibly yep. while I was listening to it. And I think because of that, it ranks it a lot higher than The Maidens, which is uh, not as shocking to me as what happened in The Silent Patient. Correct. That's so, the same way I feel. Tell us about The Silent Patient. In The Silent Patient, there is this woman who was accused of killing her husband rather brutally. And there is a lot of evidence as to why she might have done it. But from all intents and purposes, they believe that she's insane because now she won't talk, period. So the story then follows a psychologist who comes to her institution and he's like, I want to get her to talk again. And this is the story of how he gets her to do that. Mm -hmm. You're also shown in the past things that have happened. Uh, what I believe with her and him. Isn't that correct? The the story is told from two different perspectives. It is told from her perspective in the past, and it's also told from his perspective. But I'm not going to get into his perspective because that actually ruins some things. It does, actually. You're true. So it's very interesting how they deal with it. Now, when, when you start to figure out the perspective shifts, you start to realize... Who's really the crazy one here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of people in this book that are very suspect, very sketchy. Mm -hmm. You really have to decide who is the truth, who is the truth teller yeah. in this book, for sure. And we brought up The Maidens, also by the same author. These books are actually in the same universe mm -hmm. and they interface in that the main character of the maidens talks to the main character of the silent patient mm -hmm. and has an interaction which then shows you that it happened in the past of the silent patient. Mm -hmm. So it's they're all kind of interlinked. Yes, exactly. So yeah, definitely pick up that one if you're in for a kind of a twisted... Mm -hmm. psychological thriller thing happening. The next book we're going to talk about is Marshall's number one book, my number three book. And what book is that, Marshall? Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I know some people didn't necessarily rate this book as high as we did, but for us, Riley Sager is one of those authors that is just so great because it is about the journey like we talked mm -hmm. about the the experience of reading the book and because this book takes place uh in a time period that like i remember very well because you know i was around like the college high school age when this book takes place i felt like i understood the vibe of what was happening and could really put myself in the main character's shoes 
as she was Mm -hmm. going along this trip, what she was experiencing, I could see that happening very clearly. So I think that happens with a lot of Riley Sager's heroines, his main characters. I can feel that I can see myself yes in that situation you know as a woman just the way that he writes the female perspective is insightful riley sager very often does do that justice where some other people have that i've read they have a female character but i don't think they understand the female experience Mm -hmm. and there's a disconnect there that makes the character less believable and makes the ride bumpy right So tell us what this book is about, Survive the Night. Survive the Night is about a college student who, for a lot of different reasons, decides she's going to leave college and gets a ride on the ride board because we didn't always have Uber. There's just a board with, hey, I'm going this way. If you want to ride with me, call me. So she gets in the car and is heading to where she's heading with this guy that she's never met before and begins to believe that this guy may, in fact, be a serial killer who, in fact, may have killed her best friend. And there's only one little complication to this. She is an unreliable narrator and knows this because she has moments where she begins to see the world through a distorted lens. She sees it as if it's a movie, as if she's suddenly outside of her own head watching a movie and people will become larger than life details will become over amplified and people will instead of being as they are visibly they will become what they are emotionally Mm -hmm. so she sees her best friend as this starlet like out of casablanca Mm -hmm. So this means that she's always questioning her reality. So is this guy really a serial killer or is it all in her head? Exactly. It's a very interesting twist. Normally I don't like unreliable narrators, but I feel like they're starting to grow on me. (laughs) Between this and uh, The Good Sister... These are both really good thrillers that deal with a character that has psychological issues that change how they view reality. Mm -hmm. But because there are rules to their distortion, it allows me to work within that framework. And I can deal with that. Did you feel the same things about uh, Survive the Night? I did, actually, yeah. Like I said, it was all about the experience and putting myself in her shoes. And trying to figure out what was real and what wasn't real it was actually so entertaining to me. And let me tell you, I'm not really going to ruin things, but if you think you know what's real in this book, you don't. You really don't. No. Okay. All right, let's talk about my number one thriller that I read this year, which is also a book that Marshall has never read. Mm-hmm. And it is called Local Woman Missing. It's by Mary Kubica. Now, listen, the fact that this is number one on my list is actually a big surprise to me because I am very hit or miss with Mary Kubica. And I previously read a book from her and I was like, DNF could not read. Okay. So then I got this one and I was like, okay, I, I got it from NetGalley. I'm going to review this i'm going to give her another chance and i am so glad that i did local woman missing is a story of uh these this woman who goes missing obviously wow okay but honestly this book should called local women missing because after the first woman goes missing then a mother and her daughter go missing as well so you fast forward a bunch of years and one of those women comes back And so they're trying to figure out where has she been, what happened. It is told, this story is told in present and past. It jumps around a lot. There are some distrustful people in this book. It's a little bit of unreliable things happening. But the twist, when it happens, actually, I think there's two or three of them. When it happens, I did not see it coming. Um, One of them I did, actually, the very minor one, but the major one I did not see coming. And normally I am, like, 
one way or the other when it comes to abduction stories because I feel like there's not many places you can go that haven't already been done. But this book definitely goes there and I it is it is just it's great the way it is crafted, the way the whole cool. story is narrated. Very good. That is all of our favorite thrillers of this year so far. This year, of this year. We, because the year is about to end, we'll be doing more lists like this, really, you know, where, where we're going to talk about different genres, maybe seasonal reads as we're doing this. But if there's anything that you would like to hear us talk about, a specific genre, a specific author, then make sure you email us at share at elatedgeek.com so that we can start doing that because we, we want to hear from you guys. What do you guys want to hear? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There, there can always be a, another kinds of genre we might not have heard about, actually, because, you know, fiction's always growing and changing. Exactly. So thank you for listening to Elated Geek. Follow us on social media for pictures and more info on things we talked about in today's podcast. You can find Lainey on at Zany Laney or me at One True Hazard. You can also find at Elated Geek on our Instagram. And you can also find Elated Geek Tweets on Twitter. If you want to go to a website, we have www.elatedgeek.com. Links for these are in the show notes. If you want to help us to continue to bring you new and exciting things to nerd out about, please consider donating to our coffee account. The link is in the show notes and every donation is accepted with total appreciation for your support in us. Send us your geek obsessions or topics that you want us to experience and talk about in future episodes. Email us at share at elatedgeek.com. And until next time, geek out.